so students today we will be looking at electron diffraction setup so here we have already connected in your screen you can see we have already connected the electron diffraction setup and we have produced a few rings so right now you won't be able to see it on the screen because uh, uh, because the camera is not able to focus it but we will show you in a moment for the time being you can look at the setup the setup is particularly simple because uh, there are just a few connections that you need to make so if you look up your manual all these connections are described to you okay so which terminal you have to connect to which uh, terminal of the source this is the supply basically as you can see on your screen this one is your power supply so and this is your basic filament so it comes attached uh, we cannot make any changes to this one okay so if you see this tube this is like a like a bulb it's evacuated okay that means there is vacuum inside it high vacuum so it is very sensitive and um, we have to touch it with extreme care okay if we if it gets heated up too much if we hit it with a hard object uh, there is a possibility that it will explode inwards because the pressure inside is much lower than the pressure outside the air pressure okay so one has to be very careful with this one so uh, there are the f there are filaments and a bunch of other things within the tube at the back end of the tube which are not clearly visible to you even if you look at it uh, but the idea is there is a source there is a filament just like a bulb there is a filament which when you hit it emits electrons by thermal emission process okay so it's just like a bulb it hits you, you cannot see it it's in the back side and that electron then is accelerated through an anode so that one you can call it as a filament then electron passes through the anode which has high voltage that you are applying through this power supply okay and then that electron gets accelerated and becomes very high it occurs very high momentum so it has a wavelength now comparable to that of graphite at the extreme end of this arrangement there is that graphite thin film okay, there is a very thin film of graphite so once the electron passes through it then it produces these rings because it gets diffracted from the planes of the graphite at, uh, atoms in the graphite sheet okay all right so what are the basic connections that we have made here so just a few connections are there so first of all you see the black wires at the bottom these are basically power supply for the filament so it just supplies a certain amount of voltage and certain amount of current around 2 milliamperes or something or 3 amperes sorry it supplies high current 3 amperes so that the filament emits electrons so this is just for the filament now here there is a, this positive and this negative power supply that goes to your anode which applies this high voltage okay so you can go up to 5000 volts here okay right now it is set at 4 kilo volts that means 4 and 4000 volts it's applying 4000 volt between the filament and the anode so the electron is getting accelerated through 4000 volts okay so be careful with these connections uh, although the connections are good but you have to be careful with it the current is small so you won't get a much of a shock but still uh, so this high voltage is there um, also this uh, uh, so that the uh, there is proper earthing and all so there is this terminal that is connected to earth local earth okay so this to this connection that's all so that's all the connection there is in this system there's not nothing much to it so this knob is just a voltage regulator so you can control the voltage using this knob that's all so you will set up at some high voltage let's say 5000 volts and then you will go down in steps of 500 you can also do the experiment from 4500 to just to be safe but anyway so you set up at high voltage and then you go down in steps of 500 so your rings uh, as you go down it will be bigger and bigger right now it is at 4000 kilovolt so let me try and focus uh, the camera on the rings so uh, so that you might be able to see the rings so now i think it's a little bit better in terms of visibility of the rings so you can clearly see the outer ring the bigger one there's also a smaller thinner inner ring which uh, might not be very clear to you but if i zoom it let's say let's say if i zoom the screen now you see there are two rings you can see two rings now right there are actually two rings that are there in the system and basically what you do next is you uh, yeah now you can see there are two rings so what you do next is basically you have a you can take a piece of graph paper or you can take one of those measuring tapes and you put them across your rings and you calculate the diameter of the ring on the surface of this uh, sphere this bulb okay uh, one has to be very careful while doing it so just put the paper or that uh, measuring tape over here and measure the diameters uh, you can take one or two values and take them then take the mean same same thing you do with the inner inner ring okay so one ring corresponds to one of the lattice planes of graphite the other ring corresponds to other other lattice plane of the graphite d1 and d2 all right then you can, once you have this measurement this is all the measurement there is now let's say if i further reduce the voltage now it's at 4 kilo volts let me make it a little bit lesser okay 
So now you see it's at three kilovolts, roughly. That means three thousand volts. So you can see that the brightness has reduced mm, of the rings, but the diameter of the rings have gone up. So I am not sure how much uh, visibility is there on your screen. Mm, but there is still two rings. Uh, I hope you can make out on the rings. But the visibly you can see them. Okay, you can stand here and when you when do the actual experiment, it's much easier to see. Uh, so the ring size have increased now, as you can see. If I have reduced the voltage, the ring size have increased. So maybe I can go back to that higher voltage so that it's a little bit more brighter, so it's easier for you to see. Right now you can see those rings. Okay, so sorry, in a moment. Yeah, now you can see those two rings. So there is also a magnet which can demonstrate. Uh, let's say this is the wave nature. So a particle, this electromagnetic waves, these particles will or electrons as they are moving, they are creating current, right? They have a ne net magnetic field, so they can be influenced by magnetic uh, by external magnet. So we have an external magnet here, which you can use, for example, to do some uh, demonstration that these are indeed uh, charged particles that are moving, right? We are seeing diffraction patterns or waves, but they are indeed charged particles. That's why using a magnet, you can make them move around. You can see on your screen. Uh, the rings pattern is moving around as I'm changing the magnet at different positions, right? Okay. So that's about the basic uh, experiment here. Uh, there is nothing much in the experiment. So uh, rest of the calculations and all the theoretical part, you can uh, check the manual and do the calculations. Thank you for listening.